Millennials dealt with it. I mean, technically we're millennials too. But soon it's going to be our problem. The catch-22 of getting your first job. You need experience to get a job, but you need a job to get experience. So, what do you do? You get an internship. Now, Phil Gardner, head of the College Employment Research Institute at Michigan State University, says, you will not get a job, you will not get a high-level job today in the economy without an internship. So, they seem pretty important. But, what is an internship? The current definition by the National Association of College and Employers, we'll call them NACE, says that an internship is a form of experiential learning that integrates knowledge and theory learned in the classroom with practical application and skills development in a professional sense. So, there are two types of internships, the paid ones and the unpaid ones. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how unpaid internships suck for you, they suck for society, and how to make them better. First off, unpaid internships suck for you. The main reason is because they devalue you. Now, in any regular job, your compensation for working is money. But at an internship, your compensation is what we call valuable experience. Now, the problem with working for free is when you work for free, you usually end up getting work that is worth less. You get grunt work. You have to you know, fetch coffee for people, and you have to make co copies. And that's not relevant experience. It's going to build your skills. In her 2017 UI article, Summer Saalbonner asks, how can a company show how little they value you? By literally giving you zero, your work zero value. But what if your internship is a special case? What if you found one that actually does give you good experience? Well, in 2017, self-made millionaire Sidney Torres said, intern in the industry you want to be in. Don't worry about the money. Now, I'm inclined to agree with him saying that, you know, it's really important to intern in an industry you want to be in. That way you could get a good feel for that industry. You, let, you know whether it's right for you. But I don't agree with him on the money part. Because sometimes, getting paid zero dollars can actually cost you a lot of money. Now, in a 2017 CNBC article by Abigail Hess, the cost of an unpaid internship was outlined. First off, you've got opportunity costs. Unpaid internships last 12 weeks, and they pay you zero dollars. Compare that with the federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour, working 40 hours per week for 12 weeks. At the end of your, your time that you would have spent during your unpaid internship, you will have made $3,480 before taxes. Now that's a big chunk for a broke college student, but if you were working <coughs> at an actual company that was giving you the wages of an actual employee, keep in mind that check would be much larger. <coughs> now the second cost of an unpaid internship is the cost of living. Most interns are attracted to interns internships in big cities such as New York, San Francisco, and LA. Now LA, the cheapest of these three cities, would still cost you $9,500 for one summer about the time of an internship. And that's a lot of money for a college student once again. And the total cost of your unpaid internship will be $12,980. That's more than a year's worth of tuition at Cal Poly. So, before you take your unpaid internship, you've got to ask yourself, is my valuable experience going to be worth that much money? But, okay, you have the money to do an unpaid internship, and you found one that you think is going to be worth your time. Well, I suggest you still don't take it. Why? Because unpaid internships suck for society. They promote inequality. You may have the money to pay for that unpaid internship, 
But what about the many qualified students who don't, who have to pay their own way through college? According to LEND EDU's 2017 report, about 80% of college students have to pay for all or most of their tuition. That's 80% of students who are shut out of unpaid, intern unpaid internship opportunities before they even have a chance to prove their worth. Ross Perlin, author of Intern Nation, says, Internships quietly embody and promote inequalities of opportunity that, have been that we have been striving diligently to reduce in courts, schools, and communities. All of us, employers, parents, schools, government agencies, and interns themselves are complicit in, devaluing, in the devaluing of work, the exacerbation of social inequality, and the disillusionment of young people in the workforce. Now that sounds pretty bleak, but what can we do to make it better? <coughs> First, if you're considering an unpaid internship, make sure it's legal. Here are the seven tests by the uh, Department of Labor that make sure an internship is legal or not. We're just going to focus on these two. Basically, the internship needs to be trained that would be similar, similar to that which would be given in an educational environment. <coughs> so you need to be actually be getting a relevant experience in your internship. And second, interns work complements rather than displaces the work of paid employees. So you can't be doing the actual work of an employee. You can't be free labor. Now, if your internship doesn't follow these guidelines, then get out of there. And honestly, you should report it. <laughs> so according to Adam's stories in 2017, the three industries most notorious for exploiting interns are publishing, entertainment, and fashion. And, but, but you should all be careful because unpaid internships are the norm in all industries. These are just the ones where they're they're most, uh, or they happen the most. <clears throat> so what are some, but likely there are some improvements that are being made with unpaid internships. First of all, the government is starting to tighten the reins on, and the regulation on unpaid internships. So the set of tests that I showed you before, that's the updated version, updated in January of 2017. The previous tests, there are only six of them, they're really vague, and they left a lot of room for exploitation of unpaid interns. And as far as improvements for com from companies go, the NACE class of 2017 student survey showed that more companies are trending towards paid internships, which is good. However, we still have a ways to go because paid internships still only account for 38% of all internships from for-profit companies. So what are some next steps we can take? In order to solve the problem of unpaid internships, companies should provide scholarships to low-income students and minority students, and they should also continue the trend toward paid internships. And the government should continue to fine-tune the regulation of unpaid internships. And what can you do? Before you take an unpaid internship, make sure it's legal, make sure it's not promoting income inequality, and most importantly, make sure you don't devalue your work.